Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you. Every time the ArcGIS platform updates, it becomes more powerful and easier to use. More powerful and easier to use, which is fantastic. For example, you now have the capability of uploading your own custom symbols into ArcGIS Online. Now in the past, you could do what I'm doing here. You could change the symbol, point line polygon symbols to hundreds of symbols that were already in this gallery of symbology that you could use. As I'm doing here for businesses in Oklahoma City, I wanna map the spatial pattern of those businesses. In this case, check caching places. But now what you can do is you can actually upload your own custom symbol to suit your needs. So for example, if I go into the symbol editor, not only do I have this array that I've had in the past, but look, I've got a choice in here where I can say, ooh, symbols right under uploaded symbols. I can upload my own symbols right there. You can see un under uploaded symbols, I can browse my own device and upload a symbol. So in this case, it's check caching places. I've got a bank symbol. So I'm gonna use my bank symbol. Now it's important to think about the size of the images that you're uploading. You don't want a very complex symbol set that you're uploading or symbol that you're uploading, a point line or polygon. You want to keep it pretty simple because you want it to render quickly on any device, anywhere, anytime. But I've got my custom symbols now for banks. Wonderful. Now I also have antiques map because I want to look at the difference between bank or check caching places and antique malls in Oklahoma City. I have a hypothesis that the antique malls are going to be more clustered because of the behavior of antique mall shopping. Ooh, I'm going to it's much more of a social thing. You're not going to go to a check cashing place and then go to one across the street. But with an antique store or mall, you you might want to go to a place across the street. So you can see there's a place in Oklahoma City where these places are clustered and a couple of other neighborhoods, maybe in your town as well. Fascinating to look at these patterns. But notice that I've got a, a, a sort of an antique pillar for my symbol for my antique malls and a bank symbol for the check cashing places. I can also, of course, change the symbology as I could in the past by making, for example, a heat map where I can get a, maybe a better visualization of the clustering of these things. There's also a clustering tool in ArcGIS Online that allows me to do that as well, get a better visualization for what's going on. So now I've got these heat maps and I can see indeed that the check caching places are more dispersed in Oklahoma City. The antique stores are much more clustered, sort of the west central part of town. Interesting. What about for your community? You could do the same thing. How did I get that data mapped in ArcGIS Online at the beginning? I created a text file and saved it as a CSV and then I uploaded it as a, a feature service. Easy as that. I had addresses for each of these places. So here, once I've done that and I've got it changed to heat map, now I can change it back easily to my original symbols as you can see that I'm doing right here. How do I do that? I don't have to upload it again from my computer. If I go to the symbols, as you can see, styles, and then style options, notice that the ones I've uploaded are actually appearing already in the cloud. They're already stored inside ArcGIS Online, the beauty of cloud-based GIS at your fingertips. So now I've got the check caching places and the antique stores. Let's, let's review that once again. I'm gonna go to symbol style, change the symbol from the basic to symbols, and then the two that I've uploaded are sitting right there. And I'm going to say done there. And I'm going to adjust that. When I when I load it back in, notice that they're a little bit too small. So I need to adjust that a bit larger now if I'm going to re-add it. And I'm, I'm kind of liking that size a little bit better. So, okay, maybe that's just a little bit too big. So maybe I'll adjust the size a tad bit. It's easy to do, right? I can just go ahead and adjust it to a little bit of a smaller pixel size. And okay, now I've got the antique malls and the check caching places in in this case Oklahoma City why did I pick Oklahoma City well it's a great place but it's also fairly flat so I can see that there's no element of uh, relief or terrain or rivers or anything else blocking the maybe the distribution of a level playing field as it were now I'm going to save that map so you can look at it as well I'm going to call it check caching and antique stores or malls in Oklahoma City and that way you'll be able to look at it too that's the beauty of cloud-based GIS once again, is that you can share these maps and you can make web mapping applications, which is the subject of other videos that I and my colleagues have online, where you can create a instant app or a story map or a dashboard or anything else that you wanna make in terms of a web mapping application. Again, that's the subject of other videos. But right now I'm just going to create some metadata here so that I and you and others can find it. This is a good practice, a best practice for you to practice in the future. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and share that with everyone, share that map with everyone. 
And the way that I, ooh, look at this. I've got to update the feature services actually to be shared as well so you can consume this map and create your own map derivative products from this. Okay, now the way to test this is I'm going to copy the URL into a separate tab and I'm going to take off my organization name and just instead of organization.maps.arcgis.com I'm going to say www.arcgis.com so instead of organization.maps I'm going to change it to www.arcgis.com and then that whole map alphanumeric string after that and now when I do that test it in a new tab this is another best practice then you can see that truly it is shared with everyone and you'll be able to have uh, you can share it with your colleagues so that's the new custom symbols in ArcGIS Online. Now you could do this with ArcGIS Pro for many years, but now being able to do this in ArcGIS Online, it opens up new possibilities, new maps, and new visualizations and new understandings. Thanks.